And now call upon His Excellency Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Prime Minister of Bangladesh, to take the floor. Madam Chairman, Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Brothers and Friends, I would like to thank all those assembled here for having welcomed us into the fraternity of knowledge and nations. For Bangladesh, it is a source of gratification to be able to take its place by the side of forces of peace and progress. We are representatives in this group. I recall with reverence the three great statesmen under whose leadership this movement was launched. President Tito, President Gamal Abul Nasser, and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. While we have lost President Nasser and Pandit Nehru, we are fortunate to have with us President Tito, a distinguished daughter of Pandit Nehru, Mrs. Indira Gandhi. I pay homage to the valiant martyrs of Algeria, of Vietnam, indeed all martyrs in every part of the world, including those in Bangladesh, who let down their lives in the struggle for li national liberation and for the vindication of the rights of men. I place in the name of the martyrs that Bangladesh will always stand behind all those for struggling for national liberation in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. I salute the heroic people of Algeria and the brave leaders who led their historic national liberation struggle. Their glorious victory has been a source of inspiration for all those who have fought for freedom throughout the world. I would like to congratulate our chairman, President Boumedin, a great fighter for freedom, and the government and the people of Algeria for having spared no effort to make this conference a success. Madam Chairman and brothers and friends, it is not without significance that there has been a marked upsurge in the support for the principles of non-alignment as we enter the last quarter of the 20th century. This century has suffered from the ravages of the cruelest, most destructive wars in the history. It is also the century which has witnessed emergence of toiling masses, the people on the stage of history. The principles of non-alignment, as we understand them, reflect the most basic aspiration common people of the world over. This is why we have embodied these principles in our constitution and we are committed by the Constitution to support the just struggle of the oppressed people against colonialism, imperialism, and racialism throughout the world. I consider it important to affirm the term Third World tends to obscure the basic reality the world is divided between those who are the oppressors and those who are the oppressed those who support and aid the oppressors, and those who support and aid the oppressed. I would like to make it very clear that we stand for the solidarity of the progressive force of the world, that is, for those who are oppressed and those who stand by them in the just struggle for liberation and oppression, liberation from oppression. Men and women throughout the world crave for peace. They aspire to live in freedom and with dignity. Just as nations aspire to guide their own destiny to be free from exploitation and domination, to realize the aspirations, people have had to battle against the forces of exploitation. The battle has been hard fought. Millions of lives had to be sacrificed in the revolutionary wars against colonialism, imperialism, and racialism. Let us not forget the brave, eloquent words that are contained in the Declaration 
and resolutions that have been adopted at the earlier conference would remain here hollow words. And for the facts that they have written with the blood of those who have prepared to die for them. When it talks to say of action programs, when it talks of implementation of principle of non-alignment, we should realize that it calls for a total commitment on our part and a readiness to sacrifice narrow interests in order to attain what we regard to be a greater good of humanity. The challenge is set to us in that of building our environment of peace. These people who are still struggling for national liberation shall achieve their goal, in which every step can preserve its independence, in which it can secure sovereignty over its resources, can provide to its people a basic condition for decent life. But such a peace yet to be owned, the Arab treachery is to remain under the legal occupation of Israel. The people of Palestine continue to be denied their fundamental rights. The struggle for national liberation is continued in Angola, Mozambique, Namibia, Beso, and Latin America, and other parts of the world. The scores of apartheid is still suffered by our brethren in South Africa. The full realization of the situation of the people of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos have yet to be attained. There can be no doubt that the just solution of this problem, the necessary condition for the establishment of the peace in the world. Let this conference individually play this positive support with those that are struggling for national liberation and for their realization of their internal rights in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. I submit in all humanity that what we need to do is to go beyond more mere reaffirmation of blessing and principle, and to define a comprehensive strategy which sets out concrete and specific proposals for action. The awareness of the need of such a strategy is reflected in the proposal of South East King as that of the neutralization of South East Asia, whereby it has become a zone of peace, freedom and neutrality. And for the Indian Ocean to be declared a zone of peace, we have expressed our support in such schemes. In our view, however, for implementation of such schemes are yet to be worked out, what the definition and clarification is required. Or what is even more important that military condition must first be created in order to translate these schemes into meaningful reality. We must acknowledge in fact the fact, so far as these schemes are concerned, Today there is a conspicuous gap between the idol of fire and for an existing reality. It is therefore necessary to make concerted efforts to create the necessary conditions for the novel of the schemes to be realized. There are some favorable developments in the international situation which we make well welcome. The move towards Britain in certain regions of the world, Paris, peace at all, social bombing in Cambodia are not working. But in our subcontinent, we have been successful in finding a solution to the pressing humanitarian problem with which we are faced. We on our part really make a substantial accommodation in, our, in order to make possible for an agreement to be arrived at. Since we regarded this to be a positive step towards the establishment of a durable peace in subcontinent. The strategy of peace must, be, must also provide for an end, for an end the arms race for total and complete disarmament. Mankind must be rescued from the folly of proliferation of weapons of destruction and the colonial waste of resources it involves. These valuable resources should be diverted to meet all arts and human problems. There is of course a vital economic dimension to the strategy of peace. The international economic situation shows rapid deterioration. These countries have been able to concert it and concert conscious action to improve their position, often at the expense of the poor countries. We poor countries, on the other hand, are facing green, green prospects. With worsening our terms of trade, the status of export, food deficit, we are confronted by formidable problems of poverty, hunger, illiteracy, this is unemployment. The challenge presented by this situation, one of which we must respond for our ethnic survival is at stake. 
Our ultimate source is our people. We have to know our strength, how to determine people, connecting soul again for the fierce and impossible all. The intellectual sources of our countries must be pulled together. New technology must be developed. Science must be harnessed for the service of sovereign humanity and should not be allowed to be abused for developing the situation of all. The process of deconvention will be truly complete by the mental attitude, outlook, values, which are the negation of colonialism, are eliminated and replaced by such revolutionary values, an outlook which are needed to usher a social revolution in our society. I believe that the action program based on two fundamental principles, which are highlighted at Lusaka and Georgetown, namely social lines and effective economic cooperation among the non-aligned countries present can meet the challenge provided our peoples can be organized and fully mobilized. The necessary social economic changes can be brought out about and potentialities of science can be harnessed to bring about a real social revolution in our society. What is needed is the political will of will to bring about a social revolution and a common determination to cooperate with each other by the non-aligned countries. We must share our resources, our knowledge, our experience. We must share our, we must coordinate and concert our efforts. An immediate area, but such cooperation is urgently needed is food. Both the expansion of production and distribution according to need can I believe be achieved through effective cooperation among the non-aligned countries. The task before us and not easy for the vested interests of the and the forces of counter revolution, both inside and outside, have to be fought against. But this, is, this battle has, has to be fought. Peace, freedom, emancipation from exploitation has to be won. I would therefore ask that the conclusion of our deliberation, which is a claim not merely to reaffirm in general terms and principles, but should formulate a comprehensive strategy setting out the concrete and positive action which we can take together to overcome the common problems which we which face us. Madam Chairman, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Brother and Friends, I thank you all. Thank you.